In mathematics, a set A is Dedekind infinite if some proper subset B of A is equinumerous to A. Explicitly, this means that there is a bijective function from A onto some proper subset B of A. A set is Dedekind finite if it is not Dedekind infinite. Proposed by Richard Dedekind in 1888. Dedekind infiniteness was the first definition of infinite that did not rely on the definition of the natural numbers, until the foundational crisis of mathematics showed the need for a more careful treatment of set theory. Most mathematicians assumed that a set is infinite if and only if it is Dedekind infinite. In the early 20th centuries a mellow frankel set theory, today the most commonly used form of axiomatic set theory, was proposed as an axiomatic system to formulate a theory of sets without the paradoxes of naive set theory such as Russell's paradox. Using the axioms of ZF set theory with the originally highly controversial axiom a choice included one can show that a set is Dedekind finite if, and only if it is finite in the sense of having a finite number of elements. However, there exists a model of ZF in which there exists an infinite, Dedekind finite set, showing that the axioms of ZF are not strong enough to prove that every set that is Dedekind finite has a finite number of elements. There are other definitions of finiteness and infiniteness of sets that do not depend on the axiom of choice. A vaguely related notion is that of a Dedekind finite ring. A ring is said to be a Dedekind finite ring if ab equals 1 implies bar equals 1 for any two ring elements a and b. These rings have also been called directly finite rings. Comparison with the usual definition of infinite set. This definition of infinite set should be compared with the usual definition. A set A is infinite when it cannot be put in bijection with a finite ordinal. During the latter half of the 19th century, most mathematicians simply assumed that a set is infinite if and only if it is Dedekind infinite. However, this equivalence cannot be proved with the axioms of zimelo frankel set theory without the axiom of choice. The full strength of AC is not needed to prove the equivalence. In fact, the equivalence of the two definitions is strictly weaker than the axiom of countable choice. Dedekind infinite sets in ZF. The following conditions are equivalent in ZF. In particular, note that all these conditions can be proved to be equivalent without using the AC. A is Dedekind infinite. There is a function f. A, a that is injective but not surjective. There is an injective function f, n a, where n denotes the set of all natural numbers. A has a countably infinite subset. Every Dedekind infinite set A also satisfies the following condition. There is a function f, a, a that is surjective but not injective. This is sometimes written as A is duly Dedekind infinite. It is not provable that dual Dedekind infinity implies that A is Dedekind infinite. It can be proved in ZF that every duly Dedekind infinite set satisfies the following conditions. There exists a surjective map from A onto a countably infinite set. The power set of A is Dedekind infinite. It can be shown in ZF that weakly Dedekind infinite sets are infinite. ZF also shows that every well-ordered infinite set is Dedekind infinite. History The term is named after the German mathematician Richard Dedekind, who first explicitly introduced the definition. It is notable that this definition was the first definition of infinite that did not rely on the definition of the natural numbers. Although such a definition was known to Bernard Bowles Arno, he was prevented from publishing his work in any but the most obscure journals by the terms of his political exile from the University of Prague in 1819. Moreover, Bowles Arno's definition was more accurately a relation that held between two infinite sets, rather than a definition of an infinite set per se. For a long time, Many mathematicians did not even entertain the thought that there might be a distinction between the notions of infinite set and Dedekind infinite set. In fact, the distinction was not really realized until after Ernst Zermelo formulated the AC explicitly. The existence of infinite 
Dedekind finite sets were studied by Bertrand Russell and Alfred North Whitehead in 1912. These sets were at first called mediate cardinals or Dedekind cardinals. With the general acceptance of the axiom of choice among the mathematical community, these issues relating to infinite and Dedekind infinite sets have become less central to most mathematicians. However, the study of Dedekind infinite sets played an important role in the attempt to clarify the boundary between the finite and the infinite, and also an important role in the history of the AC relation to the axiom of choice. Since every infinite, well-ordered set is Dedekind infinite, and since the AC is equivalent to the well-ordering theorem stating that every set can be well-ordered, Clearly the general AC implies that every infinite set is Dedekind infinite. However, the equivalence of the two definitions is much weaker than the full strength of AC. In particular, there exists a model of ZF in which there exists an infinite set with no denumerable subset. Hence, in this model, there exists an infinite Dedekind finite set. By the above, such a set cannot be well ordered in this model. If we assume the CC, then it follows that every infinite set is Dedekind infinite. However, the equivalence of these two definitions is in fact strictly weaker than even the CC. Explicitly, there exists a model of ZF in which every infinite set is Dedekind infinite, yet the CC fails. Proof of equivalence to infinity, assuming axiom of countable choice, that every Dedekind infinite set is infinite can be easily proven in ZF. Every finite set has by definition a bijection with some finite ordinal n, and one can prove by induction on n that this is not Dedekind infinite. By using the axiom of countable choice one can prove the converse, namely that every infinite set X is Dedekind infinite, as follows. First, define a function over the natural numbers F, N power, so that for every natural number N, F is the set of finite subsets of X of size N. F is never empty, or otherwise X would be finite. The image of F is the countable set F, N, N, whose members are themselves infinite sets. By using the axiom of countable choice we may choose one member from each of these sets, and this member is itself a finite subset of X. More precisely, according to the axiom of countable choice, a set exists, G equals G, N, N, so that for every natural number N, G is a member of F and is therefore a finite subset of X of size N. Now, we define U as the union of the members of G. U is an infinite countable subset of X, and a bijection from the natural numbers to U, H, N, U, can be easily defined. We may now define a bijection B, X, X, H that takes every member not in U to itself, and takes H for every natural number to H. Hence, X is Dedekind infinite, and we are done. Generalizations Expressed in category theoretical terms, a set A is Dedekind finite if in the category of sets, every monomorphism F, a A is an isomorphism, a von Neumann regular ring R has the analogous property in the category of R modules if and only if in R, X Y equals 1 implies Y X equals 1. More generally, a Dedekind finite ring is any ring that satisfies the latter condition. The where that a ring may be Dedekind finite even if its underlying set is Dedekind infinite, e.g., the integers.